Hey everybody, what's up? This video is an update to my, well, I guess the final part of the cooling mod for the Nintendo Switch. I finally uh, got around a chance to test this a lot longer than I thought it would be before I was able to find time to do it, but uh, not a whole lot going out today. We are, <laughs> we are snowing for the first time this season, so I'm stuck inside having some fun here. And I decided that the Switch would be an appropriate thing to test as I'd like to get this thing out to you guys as soon as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our dock here and we're going to put the mod in the dock. We're going to test it. I've got my temperature probe here. Multimeter connects right to it. And we're going to test to see what temperature air the mod pulls into the back of the Switch. Now, I need to be clear that this mod deals with the temperature of the air that goes into these vents in the back. In this case, uh, specifically this vent. This one, if you look on this dock, is pulled in from right in here. That's all well and good. The other one is behind here where this circuit board heats up and you're pulling in hot air instead of cold air like this vent. So our goal is to make this one as close to the temperature of this one as possible, or colder as we can, instead of pulling in the hot air from the circuit board. This is not directly indicative. The temperature readoff of this is not exactly the same as the output that you're going to get here. Uh, of course, you pulling colder air here, it may mix with slightly uh, slightly even colder air here. By the time it gets through the system, that number can differ. So we're only going to be measuring the temperature drop of the air going in, not necessarily the temperature of the air going out, which would be an efficiency thing. We're not going for that, we're going for colder air in. So that's what this is about. Um, obviously feeding colder air in to complement the colder air here will create a more effective cooling system inside. So that's the idea here. And this only works if you have the original dock here. Uh, I don't think the other ones have that same type of back built into it, but it, as far as I know, it does work on these. To my knowledge, there is no second generation uh, that has the circuit board laid out differently. So as long as it has the same circuit board that you'll see in here, this should work for you. So without further ado, let's go get into testing here. And so yeah, like I said, we're going to start with putting it in. We're going to test it. Uh, we're going to take it out. We're going to test it again. And then we're going to compare the numbers. And I'll show you the end result. I'll show you the little mod that we're working with. And check in the, somewhere down over here, Check in the description. Uh, the link to my eBay listing will be there uh, as soon as I get it up and running. I need to put this video up is there as well. And yeah, no more stalling. Let's get into it. Hey everybody. This is a review of the now, as far as I'm concerned, complete Nintendo Switch cooling mod. This little guy has the, or at least the purpose behind this, is to cool the Switch while it's docked in the factory dock. I know there are other docks, uh, but if you happen to have this one, which I, I tend to like a little more, personally, um, this little guy should help cool down the air coming into the switch and make things a little cooler overall. Not that the switch has an overheating problem. Of course, you don't want to put it in an enclosed cabinet or anything, but this should help solve a little bit more uh, of the cooling issues that may or may not be happening and it's a simple drop-in. There's no cutting the dock, there's no busting out a knife. All you need is the mod and a tri-wing screwdriver and just a couple of minutes and I'll show you how fast this goes in. It's really really simple. So first thing I'm going to say is we're going to take off the back, the back plate, drop it in and then reverse the process. That's it. That's all there is. So we get a better camera angle, and I'll show you how it goes. Alrighty guys, so installation of this mod is way easier than you think. 
Now in general it involves taking this inner back tray off which is four long screws up here, short one here, here, this corner, and up here. So there's eight screws in total and all you'll need is and you probably won't be able to see in the video, but a tri-wing screwdriver. And I'll show you just how easy this is. It takes 30 seconds, a minute maybe. So I'm going to go a little bit slow just so you guys can follow along. We're going to want to take this back flap off of here just to make things easier. Just lift up and pop it off and set that aside. So we're going to take off all of these and these screws in here. In case you forget what you're doing, and you just dump the, the screws in a pile, all four of the long screws go here. All the other ones down here are shorter screws. So let's go ahead and take all of this off. Now I'm going to leave the screws in the spots that I take them from, just to make things a little bit easier when I'm putting it back together. You can use a very, very small precision flathead to take off the tri-wing uh, tri screws, but I would, I would recommend against it, not only because you can hurt your bit, but also you can damage the screw, and I'm pretty sure finding replacements for these screws aren't the easiest. So we've got the screws off. We're simply gonna lift this tray directly out. There's nothing attached to it, and we'll set it aside. This is the guy that we need to work with. So there's two tabs here and here. We're going to pull back on the tabs and then use this little spot right here on the circuit board to lift up. So simply place your thumbs and lift up on this little corner right here. Off one, off two, and it pops up. You are connected with a ribbon cable and uh, a plug. You don't need to worry about that, but don't bend the circuit board back too much. You can stress the connection on the back here. So just hold it up. And all we're going to do now is we're going to drop in the mod. Literally drop it in. So how this goes is if you see the bottom here, these slots in the front fit right along here. And it literally goes like this, and it's in. That's all there is to it. Now all you have to do is reverse the process and button everything back up. So I'm going to put this down, push down, make sure these two are clipped in, make sure everything's centered and sitting nicely. And now we're going to put the lid back on. Like this, reattach the screws, put the back plate back on, and we're good to go. And definitely do not over tighten these screws. If you strip the plastic on the dock where the screws are going into on the other side, you will be sorry. It will never go back together like it was the first time. Okay, and we put the back on, push down, push down, close, and we're done. That's it. That is how long it takes to install the mod. And now I will get into the testing and showing you how the temperature uh, of the air coming in with the mod in. Then I'll take the mod out do another run once the system's cooled down, and we'll see how big a difference this cooling mod has actually done. Alrighty guys, so I just installed the mod. This is the final 3D printed version. And I've been running, sorry, it's kind of hard to see there. I've been running Zelda Breath of the Wild now for about an hour and a half. And we are at 75, 76 degrees. Seems to have leveled out. And that's actually pretty good. Uh, 
Cooling mod seems to work really well. Uh, here in a minute, I'm going to disconnect it and we will see just exactly how well it, uh, or how hot it gets if the mod is not in. So we'll have something to compare to. I kind of did the videos backwards. I did the, uh, I did the mod in uh, before I um, did with the mod out. I guess I probably should have done mod out first, but yep. Yeah. Temperature probe in, 76, 77. Starting to warm up in here. Uh, the furnace just kicked on, so that may change for a second, but yeah. Uh, I'm playing for a little bit, and so far so good. So, cool. All right, so I'll take it out, and I will do another video of the switch with the um, with the mod out, and we will go from there. All right, so I took the mod out. I let it sit for about half an hour until it got cool, and I've been playing now for another hour. Uh, about an hour, hour and ten minutes, somewhere in there. Um, the temperature is pretty much leveled off. It's been at now 90 to 91 degrees for the past 10-15 minutes. Um, I am still playing, sorry you can't really see that, Zelda Breath of the Wild still. Uh, so, yeah, that is a pretty, pretty significant drop in uh, temperature with the mod in. So remember with the mod in we had 76 degrees as an average and we're now at 91. So quite a bit. Um, I didn't expect quite so much. Uh, a 15 degree drop in temperature going into the second port in the back of the switch to me is pretty significant. Um, I will probably do another test later on that tests the temperature of the air that's actually coming out to see how efficient at cooling the system is. But I wanted to make sure that the mod itself was actually pulling in colder air as it was designed to do. And it appears that with a 15 degree drop in temperature, yes, this mod works. A simple 3D printed drop in cooling mod. Much more effective than I thought it would be, but yeah. So I will get a couple of these printed off and color's not going to matter because, well, you can't see it. So it kind of comes in blue. <laughs> and uh, in case you're wondering, again, this is the mod. It's all the bigger it is. So yeah, I will put links in the description to eBay, and I may or may not do Etsy. Um, I have a shop where I did some Lichtenberg figures, but this is different. So either I make another shop, or I just list them on eBay, and we'll go from there. So, yep, that's that. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in another video. Let me know if you want one.